People always ask me, what's the funniest or the most embarrassing thing ever happened to you? And it would have to be playing Big Bill Werbenick at the Crucible Theatre here in the last 16, I think it was. Now, Bill was larger than life, great character. And he was a big lad, Bill. He was like 23 stone when he retired. Now, people always ask you, how much did Bill Werbenick drink? Because his back hand used to shake. Left hand was perfectly still on the table. The specialist told him a pint of lager would steady the hand. And it worked for him, but then he needed two pints, three pints. In the end, before Bill could have a practice session, he needed nine or ten pints of lager. So I'm playing him on the left-hand table at the Crucible, and Bill's on an 80 break with a chance of beating the highest break. And I'm sitting there and I've worked out, Bill's been up practicing in the morning, he's had nine or ten pints of lager, he's had four or five practice frames, there's another four or five pints. We've played the afternoon session nine frames, he's had another nine pints of lager there, and then we had an hour and a half before the evening session. So, a little nourishment. So I've worked out that Bill's had just over 30 pints of lager, and there he is going for the high break. He pulled all 23 stone onto the table to pot a red in the left corner pocket. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And with all the lager in him, the inevitable happened as he threw his leg up. This, <laughs> this was the loudest noise that had echoed around the Crucible Theatre. Uh, I mean, they've heard it on the other side of the arena. I'm sitting there biting the knuckles. I don't want to burst out laughing. All the crowd are biting their knuckles next to the table because they're so close. And Bill, who was bright red before he played the shot, slipped back off the table and turned to the crowd next to him and he went, who did that? <laughs> and everyone killed themselves laughing. But the follow-up to that, a woman who was sitting in row four with her 12-year-old son and their two neighbours were in row five, she sent me this letter, she said, when that happened, the neighbours had to run out of the Crucible Theatre. Not because of what Bill did, but because of what the 12-year-old said. For the people around, he did a quick impersonation of whispering Ted Lowe, and the 12-year-old said, Oh dear, Big Bill's just potted a brown. <laughs> The Crucible can certainly put the pressure on you. I mean, I wasn't known for someone that needed anger management, but I played here one year, and I never forget I was playing a guy called Wayne Jones, a good Welsh player. I had to win my first round match against Wayne to stay in the top 16, and at the time my game wasn't at its best. Anyway, I'm literally trailing 3-1 in the first session. Gone back to me changing. My head wasn't quite right, I must admit. So I'm in there talking to my dad, and my dad said, calm down, you can easily win this match. I said, calm down, so I've put my fist, what I thought was through the curtain, and just to punch the wall. Of course, the other side of the curtain was the plate glass window, which my fist went through, smashed the glass all over the place, went out onto the road down, and thankfully nobody was walking down below, so it could have been very nasty. And to this day, tournament director Mike Ganley thinks that I actually lent on the glass. And when I came back from the match, it had all been um, uh, redone, the glass had been fixed, but to this day, no one knew it was just anger, it was, was no accident. So if, Mike, if you're listening, I'm sorry.